Howdy y'all, it's Jordan Smith. So when I was in the third grade, Tyler Topper called me dumber than a box of rocks. And you know what, Tyler? You're right. There is a lot of stuff that goes into rocks. When I was doing the research for this, I was blown away by the amount of detail that goes into classifying each separate different type of rock structure. And we as a building community and the stone industry that sells to us do a terrible job of explaining what the differences are and of classifying stones properly. So I'm going to help you understand a little bit about what the differences are and how to tell the differences, especially between a white marble like this and a white quartzite like this. So jumping right into it, there are three different basic types of rock formations. There's igneous, there is metamorphic, and there is sedimentary, right? So igneous means that it gets molten and then it re-solidifies. That is granite. Granite has, has become melted rock and then has re-solidified slowly enough that you can actually see the grain. So that's one of the defining characteristics of granite is it has visible grains to the human eye. So that is an igneous rock. Now sedimentary rock, we don't usually use on high wear items like countertops because they're formed just by sediments falling at the bottoms of oceans and lakes and becoming rock due to the pressure and chemical reactions over time. But they're usually very porous. They're not real durable. And you think like sand stone and limestone and things like that where they will wear away over time. They're not nearly as hard as like a granite that's been melted and re-solidified. In between the two you have metamorphic rock like this quartzite or this marble both and that starts as a sedimentary rock and then it is compressed. It's never taken all the way up to melting but it's compressed and that pressure and then the heat from that compression makes it recrystallize into a more solid rock than sedimentary rock. So metamorphic rock, you might think of, well, it's not gonna be as hard as the igneous rock, but you would be wrong in some cases because just because a rock is melted before it forms as a solid rock doesn't mean necessarily that it is a harder rock. It has to do with the chemical composition as well. But I'm no geologist and this is getting way out of my depth. So I wanna show you now how to tell the difference between marble, which is a metamorphic rock, and quartzite, which is also a metamorphic rock, but they have two different compositions, chemical compositions, which gives them much different properties. Marble is going to be softer, more porous, and isn't going to be as good of a choice in things like kitchens where you have acids that will react with the chemical composition of marble. Quartzite, on the other hand, is very hard, very durable, and does not react with the acids. But it's hard to tell in a stone yard if this is really a quartzite or whether somebody has mislabeled a beautiful piece of marble and I think, whoa, this gives me all the properties I want with quartzite with none of the problems of marble. And look at it, it's so pretty. So how do you tell? Well, if you're in Texas, you get your knife and you carve on the edge. So the hardness of marble is much lower than the hardness of my knife. The quartzite or granite, on the other hand, are gonna be about the same hardness. So it's gonna be much harder for me to carve into that material. But I found walking around here, because these are so closely related and because the differences in stone chemical composition from color to color change so wildly, it's even hard to tell. It's easy to tell a granite from a marble, but sometimes on a white quartzite, it's hard to tell with a steel blade. So if you're in the rest of the world, and you're drinking Topo Chico like all of us cool Central Texas guys drink. You have your Topo Chico bottle when you're going picking out the stone. You do this test right here. You scratch the edge of the marble up against the glass here. And you notice that the marble flakes off onto this bottle. And it, does, it mars it, but it doesn't really cut it. You know, the marring is just sort of a polishing action from the marble up against the glass. The glass is harder than the marble, but if I do that same test here on very little flaking coming from that corner, some because it's chipping from the pressure is flaking off, but it's not marring. 
and it's actually cutting my glass. It's scratching my glass. I can feel that with my finger. And then if I try this same thing on a granite, it's really going to cut in there too. Granite ranges between a six to an eight on the hardness scale where quartzite's around a seven and the marble's much lower than that to give you an idea. Your glass is going to be around the same hardness as your quartzite as well because they're both made out of silicon oxide. The same materials that go up naturally to make this stone are the same materials that we use to create our glass. So now you know. If you think that it might be a marble, grab your glass, scratch it. If it scratches the glass, you've got a quartzite. If it doesn't, you've probably got a marble. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something. Comment below with any other questions that you have or stone classification tips and tricks. If you're a geologist, educate us, man. I know this goes way deeper than my halfway explanation that I just tried to give. Subscribe if we've earned it. Go follow us over on our social media pages and we'll see you next time on Smith House. Peaches. Texas peaches. Oh, look at the turtle. It's actually called blue turtle granite. See? This is all one grain here. I believe. I could be wrong. I'm probably wrong. But I think this is all one grain growth going out like that. And then these are the grain intersections. So geologists, is this a single grain here? Does it grow out and then are these your grain boundaries right here? Is this really that big? I mean, I see flakes in here. Are those flakes that I'm seeing small grains? And then this is just a bigger macro something going on? Or is the smaller flakes different mineral composites that make up the grain as it grows? I need, I need answers. It has to do something with solidification, right? Right? Answer me. Geologists, smart people. Away. Educate me.